But in that first issue, I kind of said, you know, uh, we're makers, in effect. Um, we're not just consumers of technology. We make things. And that was kind of the call. That was kind of the idea I originally had. Did I know where this would go? Of course not. But what really struck me is when I talked to people about this idea, they shut me up pretty quickly because they began talking about what they do or someone else they knew who was a maker. Again, we didn't have necessarily apply that word to them. And that you should meet so-and-so. You should see this project. And I knew that something uh, was there. And again, we published on the right these kind of projects. And look at Popular Mechanics in 1961. You know, um, build this sidewalk car for your kids. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what scientists on the brink of hell is, but it's pretty interesting, right? <laughs> um, make your own printed circuits. And I, again, I, I found this after we had published for a while. And this was the make your own printed circuits. And I want you to listen to the voice, the tone of this, because this is what really matters. Would you like to do this? Would you like to make your own printed electronic circuit from the base material of finished product? Process is easy. And readily obtained materials make this fascinating hobby available to almost anyone. Now, most people would think this is kind of hard, but this is the attitude of this magazine that it's possible and, and accessible. I went back, we actually published the, the same kind of article independently. And look at our language. Making your own printed circuit board might seem like a daunting task, but once you master the steps, it's easy to attain professional-looking results. And the process actually hadn't changed from the 60s. Um, this kind of etching could be done using the same materials, chemical process, uh, today. But not many people knew a lot about it. Makers, I, what really appealed to me was that they were enthusiasts. And, you know, making is, is a mindset and a tool set. And enthusiasts, I, you know, they're, they're mostly amateurs. They love what they're doing. They, they in a sense grow a community around their projects. When you become a maker, it's, you're working and talking about a project. You know, an example is, you know, if you want to go to Burning Man, you better have a bike that lights up, a glow bike, right? Well, how do you do that? Now, you might see that in a photograph and say, that's cool, but I wanted to show you, you know, the instructions for how to make that, take that um, electroluminescent wire, L wire, how to use copper tape, how to bend it, how to uh, melt it a little bit so that it, it would go around your bike. And this is kind of the core of rebuilding um, the vocabulary of how to make things. But I think the core that I tried to get at is that makers were playing. They didn't necessarily want to start a business. They didn't necessarily want to do it. They just enjoyed this. And that was the initial state. And I kind of realized that a lot of people that I saw, you might call them innovators. And we use that big word innovation, but I kind of wondered, where does that come from? What's before innovation? What happens before we think of ourselves as innovators or entrepreneurs? And I think we just start playing without actually knowing where we're going, why we're doing, but we're immersing ourselves in something that's really valuable and it's how we learn. Surprisingly, it's also how kids learn.